What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about a python package called ice cream which allows us to do easy and professional debugging and logging so let us get right into it All right, so oftentimes when we program in Python, things don't work the way we expect them to work. We implement a function and the function does not deliver the results that we expect from it, at least not every time. And we don't really know why this is the case. So for example, we might have some function here, my function, take some parameters, ABC. And then we have, for example, some loop in here right in the beginning. Then we have some if statement, some condition, I'm making stuff up right now. Then something happens here. Otherwise, we have maybe another condition. And then we have here something that we do. And then maybe we have an else branch with another loop or something, um, whatever. So we have some complicated function with conditions with loops and things that can happen in this function that are not too predictable. And of course, the proper way to debug this function is to use your debugger in the integrated development environment or in your code editor to set breakpoints, for example, here and here and to check what the values are to see, okay, A is this right now, B is this right now. But oftentimes this is too tedious and we don't really want to go into debugging mode. We don't really want to start a debugger. We just want to execute the code as it is right now, but we want to get some more information. So what we do is we just use print statements. We do stuff like print A at this point, print B at this point, and then print if A equals B to, to see the behavior here, what happens here. So maybe when we print A and B, they look the same, but this doesn't return true. And then we can examine this a little bit more by printing something like uh, type of A, and then we can print type of B, and we can examine it like that. So debugging with print statements is a real thing, even though it's less professional than using proper debugging. People do it, and I do it myself as well all the time. Now, a good compromise between using print statements and using uh, the proper debugger is to use a package called ice cream. Ice cream is basically like a print statement for debugging, but with uh, superior features. And we're going to look at this in this video today. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up a terminal and we're going to install ice cream. And then we're going to get rid of this sample code here, we're going to import from ice cream. Uh, IC the IC function from ice cream. And now I'm going to show you a couple of examples to so that you can see why this is the quote unquote better print for debugging. So let's say as a simple example here, I have some add function takes x and y as parameters and returns just basic x plus y. Now, what I can do here is if I call for example, add 10 and 20, I can get 30 here as a print statement. But maybe I have multiple of those statements. And maybe I have here 40. And I have here 60 and 70 and 30 and 10 and 10 and 20 and 20. And I want to know, okay, what is the output here. But when I just look at the output, I have to especially when the list is longer, I have to see, okay, 100 belongs to which one it's the third. So the third is this. And of course, in the case of addition, it's simple, I can just look at the values and add them manually. But imagine this is a more complicated function, and I cannot predict immediately by looking at the function call what the result is going to be. Then of course, it would be nicer to have the function call uh, to see, okay, what is actually being called and what is the result of this function call. And this is exactly and of course, I can do this with print by just adding by, by just add, uh, using an F string and saying stuff like, okay, I'm calling add with the parameters 10 and 20. And this is the result and stuff like that. Uh, but I can also just replace print by IC. And then you will see this way more convenient output format where I see IC here as a keyword and then add with the parameters that I called, or that I put into the add function and the result of the function call. And the great thing about this is and this doesn't work with a print statement. I can also use the result to assign it to a variable. So uh, for example, let's just use one of these lines here. If I use a print statement, and I say result equals, uh, and then I print the result, I will get as a result, none, because the print function does not return anything, the print function doesn't have a return value. The add function, however, has a return value. 
So what I would want to do here if I want to do it with print only is I would have to store the result of the addition in result, then I could print the result. Or what I could do is I could just use IC, I would do the addition, get the output and also I would be able to get the result in the result variable. So you can see I get the logging message, but I also get the result stored into the result variable. So whatever returns, uh, whatever is returned in here is also returned by IC, it passes the return value, so to say. Um, all right, so that's a very simple example. Uh, another nice thing is this also works with dictionary access. So let's say I have a simple dictionary here, let's call it data. And in data, I have some maybe another data keyword here uh, with one, two, three, four, five. And then we have maybe labels in here. And uh, we have something like A, B, C, D, and E. And then I want to print something like data, data two, or something like that. Now, this is the output I get from print, if I replace print by IC, I get the uh, code that I executed. So I get data, and then which key I accessed and which index and what the result is. So this is just again, giving me more information about what I did. Now, it's not only about the access, it's also printing the data structure itself. Now I'm going to copy here something because uh, it's just a larger dictionary, it isn't something that is uh, of any relevance here so that you have to understand it, it's just a big dictionary. And this thing here, if you print it with an ordinary print statement, what you get here is this it doesn't look very, very good. And of course, if it's larger, it's going to look even more confusing. If I here replace print by IC, I will get a better view of the data. First of all, I have some colors, I have uh, gray for the brackets, and I have, uh, what is this teal or something for the actual keys and values. And you can see that this is just a better overview. I have metadata users, I have indentation, it looks just better. So this is also something if you print a dictionary, if you print a JSON object, it's better to print it with IC than with print. Also, I can just print an IC statement anywhere in the code. So let's say again, I have some function and this function has maybe uh, a value that it takes. And if the value is, let's say if the value is uh, even, we're going to print something or we're going to return true and else we're going to return false. And I want to know, okay, where am I in the function? So if I print here, my function and 10, which is even, I would just get the result. And what I can do now in the function here is I can call, let's say here an IC without any parameters without any content inside. And you will see that this returns to me the line that was executed in the function. And at which time point, which means that now by running this, I know this function call here produced um, or resulted in IC being called in line five. So we enter this else branch, uh, if branch. So that is also a nice feature. Uh, this, this is just nice to see, okay, which condition uh, or, or are we entering the if branch, the elif branch, the else branch, or where am I in the code? Um, yeah, so what we can also do, and this is nice, we can also disable IC for a certain section of the code. So let's say, for example, I call this function here, uh, with IC here and with IC here. And then I change this to 11, for example, and this to 12, then you will see, okay, I get 585, because this is even odd, even um, at the different time points here. And what I can do now is I can say IC disable to no longer get the IC messages, then I can copy this, paste it down here, and you will see I don't get any more messages, even though I run the functions uh, three more time or the function calls three more time uh, times. And if I say now enable, and I copy this again and paste it down here, then again, I get uh, more output. So this is just nice if you have a section that you don't want to log anything for because you know that everything there is fine, you don't need information about the section, just disable IC for this part, and then enable it again, because you don't want to necessarily remove the IC values here, you can just say, Okay, I want to keep them in a function. But if I call it in this section here, don't execute them.
So that's also a nice feature. Um, and then also in general, we can just configure how ice cream works. So we can say, for example, um, let's do something more complicated. Let's say I have a function output to file and I get a text parameter here. And what this function does is it says, I open up a debug log.txt file in writing mode sf and then I say f write um, or maybe let's do this in appending mode uh, write the text and also add a backslash n. So this would be a function that just takes text and outputs it to uh, to the file. And what we can do now is we can say I see configure output and we can say, first of all, let's add a prefix. I want to have not IC, but debug, for example, debug and then pipe and a space. And then I also want to have an output function and the output function is output to file. So basically, instead of just using the text and printing it onto the screen, I'm taking the text of the IC uh, function output and I'm feeding it into this function here, which writes it into a file. So I'm logging the output. Uh, and I can also say something like include context equals true to get some more information. Uh, and then I can call again this function here, I see, uh, or actually let's, let's add, let's define the add function up here again. Like this, and then I can just say I see add 10 and 20. And when I run this now, you can see I don't get any output, but I have this log file. And here you see I have some context, so which line and which part, and then what happened. And here you can also see the prefix. So yeah, this is how you do professional or sort of professional debugging better than just using the print statement in Python using ice cream. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.